Hello, hello, hello! What is up, everyone? I am here. <laughs> I am barely here, as usual. Technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, you know what? I need to say something to Siri to get my lighting right. Hey, Siri. Streaming lighting. There it is. <laughs> yes, turning it purple and getting my, getting all my lights and all set up right. How is everybody? I hope you're doing great. Uh, we've got, uh, a lot of the usual suspects here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is great. Um, I wanted to, uh, today I want to just uh, do a little bit of uh, behind the scenes footage. Um, and I'm going to just, you know, I don't have lots of it, so I'm going to be doling it out a few minutes at a time. So, uh, not, you know, not a lot, but some, <laughs> uh, this time is probably going to be pretty, uh, pretty long compared to uh, some of them, but, uh, but thanks everybody. Um, first of all, I just want to say, uh, uh, thank you to all of those who are giving stars like Tyler Allred. Hi. Hi again. How are you? Uh, thank you very much for the stars. It, I appreciate it. It helps, uh, helps me do my thing here. It helps support me to, uh, stay on and keep streaming and, and keep hanging out with you guys. And, uh, I really appreciate you. So, Let's see. Hey, we have a question for Luke. Luke is, oh, it's a very long question. So I'm going to, uh, let me, let me just summarize quickly. Um, you, Luke, you had an order on Streamly and, uh, and it's going to be, I, you know, we're having, I'm still having some issues with shipping with Streamly. So, uh, hopefully things will, uh, get out by the end of this week. That's my hope. Um, something like that. <laughs> I can't, I can't absolutely guarantee it, but it's, you know, it's one of those things where we're having logistical issues. Part of it is, has something to do with, uh, the plushes, the eco plushes, the Barney eco plushes. Um, they're not, uh, the usual size of something that, uh, Streamly ships. So I kind of have to, we kind of have to figure out what's going on there. So, um, so I, um, yeah, we're, we're going to get you everything as, as quickly as we can. Everything will be shipped. We, we, we guarantee it. It will get there to you somehow, even if I have to ship it directly myself. Uh, let's see. Who do we have here? We're also talking about Pasquale, I think. Yes. And Timothy says, let's see. Can I deliver a picture of Pasquale to you for you to sign? Uh, I don't believe that uh, Streamly does send-ins. But if you go to celebworks.com, uh, you will... Let's see, do I have that? I still don't have that, do I? Nah, I don't. Not on this profile. Um, I have uh, a store at, at celebworks.com, and you can do a send-in there. And it's uh, C-E-L-E-B-W-O-R-X.com. Celebworks. Works with an X. So uh, send them... Uh, whatever it is that you're, well, actually, if you, if you go to the website and you, you look around in the store, my store, uh, you will find the, uh, instructions on how to cover that. So what else do we got here? And thank you. Thank you for that order. Um, who else is here? A little bit of everybody. We got, we got Ray, Raekwon, we got, uh, cool Swartz. We got who else? Blake Chambers, 47 cartoon guy, <laughs> Ellie Jesse. Hey, Ali Jessa, how are you? Uh, Brandon Hosky, Michael Reference, how are you? We got, wow, lots of names here. Hey, Haley Pierce, awesome. I, let's see, what else? Uh, we got Luke, we got Tyler, we got everybody. Everybody's here. <laughs> and uh, hey, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn's here as well. Gwendolyn sent stars, thank you so much. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Let me see if I can find you here. 
Hmm? <laughs> All right. Uh-oh. You, you know, flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> Hi, John Jr. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, Go to almost virtually see you. I'm seeing you in my mind. I'm using my imagination. <laughs> All right. What else? We got uh, Nathali. Hi. Hi. Let's see. You've got your sending. You're sending stars, aren't you? Yes. Let's see. Look. Stars and hearts. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And the question is, what does Barney like to eat? Well, peanut butter and jelly, of course. PB&J sandwiches are a big thing. And healthy snacks of all kinds. And we're going to be, I think, the behind-the-scenes footage, uh, we're talking about healthy snacks in this, in this footage. So uh, we'll get, we'll get uh, caught up on that. Uh, who else is here? Hmm, 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 hmm. Look at this. DJ Bob, how are ya? Good to see you. Yeah, sorry I got that stuff late to, to you late. Uh, it was just crazy. Another crazy week. So, uh, but thank you. Uh, thank you again for having me on your podcast. I'm going to be on the DJ Bob show very soon. So uh, that'll be, that's always fun. Always have a great conversation with Bob. Um, let's see. Sean Horace is here. Sean's asking about the Muppets. And let's see what Sean says. Uh, oh, this is tough. What is my favorite Muppet Mayhem episode? I have to tell you, I have not seen all of the episodes yet. I am, I am savoring them. I am watching them one or maybe two at a time, and I don't want to watch the entire season at once. That's how much I'm enjoying this. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, after I finish binging the entire thing, or slowly binging, doing a slow motion binge, I will let you know what my, my favorite uh, episode is. Um, we, you know, it's, I've seen um, two episodes, I think so far, maybe, maybe three. And, and so far it's just, it's so, so great. Everybody did such an amazing job on the show. Really, really did. All right. What else? Who else is here? Uh, all right. Hey, 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 hey. Got a little, little bit of everybody. Let's see. We got some friends that I invited. Not sure. Hey, Johnny Cook. <laughs> Don't forget milk. That's right. Milk and cookies when cookies are available. <laughs> and popcorn. That's right. Popcorn is very important. It's true. Let's see, Barney. Does Barney have the popcorn ready for the footage? I don't know. I don't think he. Did you make the. Oh, I knew I forgot something. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I didn't make popcorn. Oh, no. Oh, what'll I do? Well, I'll just watch the video without it, and then I'll have popcorn later. How's that sound? Hi, everybody. <laughs> so long. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> yes, he is gone. He just likes to, you know, pop in and pop out. <laughs> All right. What other questions do we have? Uh, we've got... Let me, let me look for this one. Oh, do I have any funny stories about Stephen White? I, you know, working with, working with Stephen White is basically one great big funny story. Uh, when I worked with him on uh, Chuck E. Cheese, uh, which was before I worked with him on Barney, uh, we just laughed the whole time. It was just, he's hilarious. Um, and of course, you know, he's in... The Guinness Book of World Records for being able to turn his feet around backwards. <laughs> and I actually have footage of that that I will show at some point in the future. <laughs> uh, he did that on, what was it, the match game or whatever? I think it was the match game. Uh, he came on and uh, as a contestant, and, and they, <laughs> I think that may have been one of the reasons they had him on, because they, they actually helped him turn his feet around it was pretty cool anyway that's on youtube i think if you look for it so um oh what else what else what else we've got i'll look for this one <laughs> interesting question what was it like working with scott wilson 
uh, from Chuck E. Cheese. Scott was great. Scott was also hilarious. We had, you know, he, he embodied uh, the rat. He was great. He was so funny. Uh, we all had such a great time doing that. And speaking of behind-the-scenes footage, I have behind-the-scenes footage of uh, recording that. I don't think I've shown you that yet. I may have shown you a little bit of it, but I don't think I've shown you all of it. But um, but yeah, uh, behind-the-scenes footage from recording Chuck E. Cheese shows, show or shows, and uh, and that was, that was uh, you know, we had such a great time. Such a great time. What do we got here? <laughs> oh, here we go. Matt Parrish. Hey, Barney. Popcorn! Popcorn, and thanks for the stars, Matt. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. Awesomeness. Awesome sauce. Let's see. Mr. Jason is asking... <laughs> Let's see. Oh, cool. Jason is working on a fan picture for Barney and the Backyard Gang. Excellent. How are you? How's it going? How's your playlongs? Jason, Jason creates amazing stuff. Uh, look for him. Mr. My Jazzy Mac. And uh, take a look for uh, his uh, Barney playlongs. They are pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty amazing. So we got a little bit of everybody here. What else? And da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Tyler asks, would you consider uploading behind the scenes footage to YouTube? And uh, I am going to, I'm f trying to think of how to package that. Uh, for right now, uh, I just want to keep it within the, the live stream, but I am probably going to start doing little clips here and there of uh, behind the scenes stuff and maybe I'll introduce it and talk about it or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, there's, I, I want to do clips for YouTube uh, shorts and then I want to do clips for, you know, reels for Facebook and for uh, Instagram as well. And so, you know, I keep saying I want to do that and I keep, you know, <laughs> I keep looking at things. Been a been really busy lately, really busy. Um, let's see, what do we got? What's the next question? <laughs> is it true that Jeff Brooks has an unforgettable laugh? Answer to this question is yes. <laughs> we used to. We were so evil. We would try to crack him up. I th I've told this story before, but. We had, you know, the dinosaurs always had headphones on so that they could hear us in their, in their ears, but the microphones on the set couldn't pick us up so that they, they could mix the audio and keep it clean and everything and uh, clean, nice clean mix. And so uh, a lot of times what we would do is the three dinosaur voices would just hit the mute button, which muted this speaker on the stage that everybody could hear, so everybody could not hear us anymore, and we would just talk to the dinosaurs, and we would, you know, tell jokes to Jeff Brooks, and it'd be really quiet on the stage, and all of a sudden, Jeff Brooks would just burst out laughing, and we'd get ourselves in trouble. We'd hear, dinosaurs, dino voices! Because, <laughs> you know, we couldn't, we couldn't help ourselves. We could not help ourselves. Look who we got here. Mr. Mark Aaron, how are you? Good to see you. It's always good to have you here. I am, I am good. I am good. How are you? Are you good? I hope you're good. I mean, I'm well. I don't know if I'm good. That's for other people to say, whether I'm good or not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think that it's a funny way to say I'm, I'm okay or I'm doing well is to say I'm good. It kind of sounds like a brag, doesn't it? I'm good. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I am good. <laughs> what else oh let's see bob says bob says episode is coming out tomorrow yay dj bob show look for that the dj bob show episode with me on it is coming out tomorrow thanks bob yay awesome all right well i think we sh we shall have um more questions asked and answered later on but for now i want to see if we can actually play this 
play this video. I try, you know, I tried to set it up and I, I'm like, okay, um, I had it set up before and it stopped working. So <laughs> between the last time I showed a video and this time it stopped working. So I tried to really quickly rejigger it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. All right. This ladies and gentlemen is footage from, um, the it's from i believe the first season i think of barney and friends i believe i think but you're going to recognize the episode uh because of the costumes and such and the the lines that are being delivered now i have to say before we start that because i'm streaming on facebook uh i cannot keep music in i've only kept in a couple of notes and hopefully that won't get me muted but because of, uh, you know, uh, because of copyright and stuff, um, if Facebook hears their, their robots hear some copyrighted music, they will instantly mute the stream. And so if I get muted, <laughs> I will come back. But I, I only left in a couple of notes from uh, here and there, and hopefully it, it won't be a problem. So let's see if this works. Let's go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Green page 25, scene 17 and 18. That's Heather. In five, four, here three, two. Healthy snacks, cool water. Get your healthy snacks and water right here. Eat a healthy snack while you wash your surgeon. Ooh, ooh. I'd like a nice cold glass of water, please. Certainly. Good to hear about the water. Please exercise. Oh, and that's it. Exercise circus. Thank you, Mark. Season two. When are you supposed to come down, guys? On the second eight. Yeah. Okay. And that's Miss Penny giving. She's our performance director. Sweet and holding the soft tray. That's Elizabeth. So is that problem. Problem. Pia. Heavy tray, so she's holding holding on to it. And that is Jim Rowley, our director. So they're changing the direction, tra changing the blocking here so that uh, Pia enters from a different direction. Oh, that's not nearly enough time. I need to, yeah, I, uh, that did not quite work out. Uh, that wasn't all of the video. I will have to show the rest of the video another time, I guess. I'll figure that out. But, um, but yeah, that was, that was, uh, what it looks like when we're, uh, doing camera rehearsal and doing blocking and when we go into shooting. So our camera operators that are there and they are standing by. And uh, as soon as the blocking for that particular shot is done, uh, then, then uh, they roll tape. And if there's music, it gets played back. And uh, everybody, uh, everybody gets in sync and does their thing. And uh, so much fun. So much fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, Jason says, you should post it. Yeah, I, I am going to post uh the clips over time see the, the thing is that if i post everything like right away then i'll be out of footage i mean i actually have overall i have probably a couple of hours of footage almost all of it unfortunately is uh, well or fortunately is uh is from the movie from barney's great adventure and I have only a little bit of stuff from the first season or from any season of uh, Barney and Friends behind the scenes. I don't have any footage now. I've come to realize that I don't have any footage from uh, the Backyard Gang era. I think maybe Stephen White does. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to get a hold of him and, and ask him if he does. And I'll see if he would be willing to lend me some footage that I could show here. That would be fun. <laughs> And, um, and so I am, uh, you know, I'm, 
I'm working on I'm working on plans for doing clips and reels and all that kind of good stuff, and uh, and so it was um, you know it's it, 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 there are various considerations I have to take I have to uh, take into consideration considerations considered, so I will uh, I will you know I will announce as soon as I start making videos short videos and such, um, who else what else do 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 do, do? archiving and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's see bouncy clowns <laughs> when they turn into bouncy clowns there was i don't know if i have footage of that episode that was funny oh or that part of the episode um i have uh kind of the you know the well i'll i i'll let it be kind of a surprise but i do have more from that episode uh where everybody's uh kind of in the in the the center ring of the circus um but not a lot and i wish i could i really wish i could show uh you know rehearsing a, a scene with a song or shooting a scene with a song but uh it's just too too much of a risk on facebook with the the way their robots work sorry about that plus if we were actually rolling, I would be in my booth. and I wouldn't be able to be out there shooting. Although I do have some footage uh, for, of me when I'm actually in my booth and I'm shooting our monitors. We used to have, uh, there was a great big monitor that was in front of all three booths and we'd all watch it. And it was split into four different parts. Uh, there was camera one, two, and three. And if we had a camera four, that that was on there and then there was what was what's called program at the top which shows exactly what's what's uh what's being cut to so when we shoot television like this uh, which is multi-camera they actually cut it they switch it live so that there's a switcher back in a back room someplace in the control room and and the director will call the shots and camera two and camera one and you know and that that sort of thing so that when they when we're shooting all the different cameras get the editing kind of gets done live and then there's some cleanup editing later and that sort of thing and all the different shots get put together and uh so so that's that's the process and i will you know i'll show as much as as much as i can of that although a lot of the, the behind the scenes footage i have is pretty boring <laughs> it's like people just kind of wandering around doing their thing <laughs> Ah. All right, let's see. What did... Hmm, what's the question? What is the question here? <laughs> let's see. I'm uh, trying to go through the questions here. And... Uh, <laughs> and Justin says, It had to be hot in the suit. Yes. Yeah. Very sweaty in there. Uh, so I always say that I, I managed to escape from... Uh, I managed to dodge the uh, uh, <laughs> loud motorcycle. Sorry about that. Uh, I managed to escape the sweaty job, and I just got the the voiceover job, which was great. But uh, but yeah, it was very hot in the suit. And there's a you know uh, th at one point they put a fan, a small fan, into the suit, and uh, you know, <laughs> and and there or Barney would sit down on a crate, and he would have a I have a fan in his mouth, which looked pretty funny. Barney's mouth wide open with a fan in it. So, yeah. Um, Josh Martin had a... Josh Martin's nickname is Smokey because the fan in the suit actually caught fire. <laughs> sort of started smoking one time. And they had to get him out of the suit really fast. It's very... It's a little risky. Um, but, uh, but he got out. So, yeah. That was his nickname. Mr. Smokey himself... Ah, uh, what else? Mm -hmm. Boy, we have lots of questions here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So here's a good question. I. Here's a good question. This is uh, uh, Matt asks. Uh, how exactly did Barney's birthday parties work? Did you make a special show for the birthdays, or was it only songs and no? dialogue I, I i think you're talking about the custom videos that people would buy with the name inserted i think um 
if you oh birthday birthday parties maybe you're talking about maybe you're talking about a live thing um there were, were the two different things uh, when we first started out uh there was a barney birthdays thing where people could actually get a real barney to come and and, and appear at a birthday party uh that was very early on and that didn't last all that long uh and uh as I recall, it was, I think it was like he was non-speaking, I think. And then we had just the songs and everybody would sing along. So I think it was pretty much like a, a regular, like a walk around character at a, at a theme park. And then they would play the songs from a CD or something. Uh, Cause I don't recall re- play, actually recording a birthday party dialogue thing at all. Now for the for the custom videos, that was a different thing. We did this whole birthday, you know, the whole custom birthday video, and then I went into the booth and I recorded name after name after name after name after name, and so those got inserted into the birthday video, uh, and then after I left, um, other people would, you know, uh, who did the Barney voice came along and they started doing other names if other names were were needed, so. Yeah, um, lots of birthday stuff. Barney birthdays were a big thing back in the day, weren't they? They really were. Mm Hmm. Let's see. Oh, wow. Having trouble keeping up here. Um, Oh, yeah, I saw this. I saw your, your comment, Joseph. That's excellent. Congratulations. Excellent. And Actimates Barney is uh, not the easiest thing to find anymore. <laughs> not really. I um, hope he's in good working condition. Um, I, um, uh, you know, we had, a, it was an amazing time recording that. Uh, speaking of repeating things over and over and over again, the Actimates Barney, it was one of those things where we had, uh, you know, words and phrases that were all cut up and then they put them back together to make him say different things. And boy, was that, it was, it was really wild. It was kind of, uh, kind of meditative, very zen. I'll just repeat over and over again. There he is. There he is. There he is. <laughs> over and over and over again. Oy. Uh, let's see. Ah, what was the process? Asks Purpley Voice. Uh, when it came to recording Barney albums. Well, Barney albums were recorded just like any other record album would be recorded. We would go into the studio. Uh, they would have... Uh, uh, Bob Singleton or whoever was doing the music at the time, Joe felt Joe Phillips or, uh, or whoever was on it at the time, um, would record, I think they would record something of a, not a full track, like an instrument track, but most of the instrumentation. And then, uh, the voices would come in and we would record over it. Uh, we would record our portion and, uh, they would have the kids' choir come in, and the kids' chorus chorus would record their part to fill and make it nice and make it nice and uh, kind of a nice plump sound with lots of people in there, and and uh, and it was it was great. It was always fun because um, <laughs> because we always made it fun. We we had a lot of fun recording, um, and and as usual. Um, as, as happens most of the time with recording albums, not everybody was in the studio at the same time. So when I was recording, it was just me recording or when Patty was there or when Julie was there, um, since there generally wasn't like any dialogue where we had to talk to each other. So, uh, so it was just each of us or the kids chorus who would come in and, or individual kid actors would come in. So, so yeah, it was pretty much like recording any regular record album. Um, let's see. Hmm, 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 hmm. Brandon says, hey, Brandon. Uh, interesting seeing where they rip off pieces of, of that early set to place the cameras. Yeah. Such a small smet, you got a set. You guys made it seem really seamless. Uh, we had a lot of wild walls. Uh, there are, when you have a really small studio, you have to have wild walls. Of course, on a lot of shows, there are wild walls. And what that is, is, uh, Brandon knows about this. There's, uh, you know, w- walls that can be on the set that can be just taken out, sometimes flown up 
into the into the grid or wherever, or rolled away or swung out so that cameras can be placed uh, to see different parts of the set. Because and if you do, don't do that, and especially if the room that you're shooting in, the set room is is kind of small, there's no place to put your cameras. So, boy, I got to tell you on on uh, Muppets Mayhem, the the set was. Uh, there were a couple of rooms that were really tiny. Boy, they crammed a lot of people in there. <laughs> There's a lot of puppeteers in one room at one time. And uh, as I recall, in some of them, the walls were not really wild. And uh, there were camera operators and there were, you know, all kinds of director and and uh, sound folks. And it was great. Everybody, it's talk about making it look seamless. Muppets Mayhem. The Muppets always make it look seamless do an amazing thing um what else oh here's a here's a question that this is one of the frequently asked questions tim's asking how does barney come to life do they pause camera and does someone grab the doll and then big barney walks to jump yes that's exactly it so what we do is we have what's called a lock off uh camera will uh camera will be on the barney doll when he's about when he's about ready to come to life and then we'll do a zoom out and (laughs) and then barney uh the doll barney doll gets taken away and barney the big barney comes in and they uh, camera zooms out again while barney jumps up and so the two are put together kind of like dissolved together and effects go up in front of it so that the transition between the two is hidden so uh so yeah i mean it was it was really pretty simple to do it wasn't like some you know cg thing or something it was really basic camera you know really good camera work and uh some nice sparkles that that covered up any any differences between the two and yeah it was great um Super, super, super talented camera, p- camera operators and people in post and everybody on that show. Lots of great people. Uh, let's see here. What else? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this is a good question. Mark asks, how close did Wishbone shoot to you guys? Uh, they were at a different soundstage. They were elsewhere. They were not, they did not shoot where we shot at least not while i was on the show um i'm not sure what studios what sound stages they were on we were at uh for most of the time that i was there uh for pbs we were at the studios at las colinas and wishbone was not there they were elsewhere they did a lot of location work and we didn't so they were out you know wandering around through you know the suburbs and various different kinds of sets and, uh, you know, just out in the countryside and doing all kinds of cool things. But, uh, but so, so yeah, I don't know where their, their studio was. That's a really great question. I have no idea. See, you got me. You got me. What else? I'm going to, I'm going to see what this is. (laughs) Here's a question from Alexis. Uh, you're also a graphic designer. How do you get to that field of graphic design? Um, it's, you know, like anything else, you kind of have to break into it in a, in one way or another, but, uh, training is good. <laughs> training is, is necessary. I got a lot of training, uh, kind of on the job training because I just started doing graphic design for, for individuals and, um, small companies and stuff like that. Just freelance. Uh, my degree uh, from college is in art and painting. So I didn't actually get a degree in graphic design. Um, I have just, uh, you know, as far as graphic design goes, I'm pretty much self-taught. And um, getting into graphic design for TV and film is one of those things where uh, I would imagine that a lot of people who start as a graphic designer for TV and film start out as a, uh, as a, um, a production assistant, a PA in the art department and, you know, do little bits and pieces there. And as they gain skills, then they may be able to move up and become, you know, join the union, 
uh, it's one of those things where someone has to kind of invite you to join the union. If they're going to, if a production is going to hire you, a union production, they have to write a letter to the union and say, hey, we'd like this person to join the union. And then, um, then you pay your dues, you pay your initiation fee. Uh, it's the art directors guild is our union. And, um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, uh, it's a constant learning process. I'm always learning new stuff. I have to learn new stuff because processes change and materials change and the way people do things change. And, uh, so it's, um, it's, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those subjects where I can't really answer fully because there are lots of different ways you can kind of come at it. Um, but I, I came at it from doing graphic design for, um, for small clients, for all small freelance clients. And my friend Denise Bazzini was doing interior design and then she broke into doing, uh, set decoration and production design and she asked me to do graphic design for her and so uh that's kind of how i got in and um and yeah i mean there's like i said there's various ways to get into it but um but it's not really something i can really get into here because it's it's kind of it can be complex um what else do we have what else do we have uh uh, brandon asks can we see more footage from behind the scenes of Barney and Friends? Yes, you will. I have more, and I will show it. Uh, not today, but more. Like I say, I have to kind of spread it out over time because <laughs> I don't want to run out right away. And I don't also don't want to be repetitive with it. Um, <laughs> Mason says, I bet Barney would love to have pizza. Yes, Barney loves to have pizza. He loves to have pizzas made by Pasquale, who's it's right over there. You can see him. There's his mustache right there. <laughs> He's sitting back there watching, watching and listening as I talk about him. Um, what else? Who else? Um, here's a question about. Uh, is it true that you did some graphic design work for Barney in the early days? Uh, I didn't really, not really. Um, that was somebody else's department i was just doing the voice although i kind of you know the the closest thing i did for graphic design for the show probably was uh uh was helping to get the the cast and crew jackets made <laughs> and and taking the 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 graphic and kind of cleaning it up and sending it off to a company that embroidered our our uh touring jackets uh which are which are awesome and one of which i've lost one of which got stolen by a cleaning crew on an airplane after I left it. I left it up in the, up in the bin and turned around, you know, not, you know, just a few minutes later. And uh, by the time I got back, it was gone and gee, nobody knew where it was. And the investigation led nowhere. That happens a lot. I've had a couple of things stolen like that. It's really sad, but, uh, so if anybody ever sees a Barney jacket, Barney crew jacket, for sale like on ebay and it says bob on it you'll know that it is stolen merchandise so let me know <laughs> and we'll get that taken care of <laughs> stolen stuff stolen shrag uh-huh let's see oh what well, so many questions so many questions so many yay uh-oh who is this who is this? Aronzo. Hi. Let me get you. This is, if you can, when folks, when you make comments, if you could keep them short and maybe make them, uh, break them up into separate pieces, uh, I can't really put up a long, long comment and I'd love to put up your comments. So Aronzo, if you want to, uh, introduce yourself through a really, you know, just a couple of short sentences, I would love to uh, put you up. Uh, this comment is just a bit too long. Uh, Aronzo's asking, uh, we'll, we'll let, let Aronzo, um, uh, we'll let Aronzo, uh, uh, give you, uh, his, his resume when he, uh, when he <laughs> puts up a, when he puts up his, 
his next uh, question. Um, let us know who he is. Who else? Who else? Hi, Michael. Hi, Mason. Hey, Stephen. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, I'm... <laughs> Uh, here's, here's the question from Blake. How long did it usually take to record dialogue for a tour? Um, that's a good question. Um, I imagine that it took maybe, you know, probably about an hour, maybe something like that. Um, dialogue did not take all that long. Well, actually probably more than an hour, hour and a half, maybe. Um, because of the amount of, uh, songs in a, in a tour show, um, it's, you know, the dialogue, of course, is a shorter part of the show. So, uh, so it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it doesn't take all that long to record, uh, the dialogue. Hey, Aronzo. Now, Aronzo, somebody tells me that you, uh, worked for, uh, Universal Studios and that you were, uh, you were a part of our show, um, Barney's, uh, a day in the park with Barney. Is that true? Yes. Tell me about it. Tell us about that. I love that. And we got Jake. Hey, Jake. Jake, what's up? Good to see you. Haley asked, did you have fun recording? I always had fun recording. It was just, it was never a chore. It was always fun. No matter what we were recording, everybody always made it fun. Um, let's see. Who else? We've got Joseph. We've got Zizis. Hello. See, I, you, know, you know, if you flatter me like this, <laughs> I won't always put up your comment. But every once in a while, I'll do this just to, you know, feed my ego. <laughs> what can I say? Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate you. I do appreciate you. Um, there we got Cameron. Hello. Uh, Cameron says, uh, what was it like making Barney's Great Adventure in the movie? And do you have, do you have bloopers? I, you know, there are, I have behind the scenes footage and I, I guess some of it might be considered bloopers. Um, but I don't have anything that's like outtakes that were shot by, you know, the camera. Uh, I have, the only thing that I have is stuff that I shot with my, uh, with my own kind of prosumer stuff. Aha! Look at this. Yes. I appreciate you, ZZ. And Aranzo says, this is true. Yes, part of the cast of A Day in the Park with Barney at Universal. Joined the show in around 2015. Excellent. Always great to meet another Barney body. You guys are so talented. Um, I always, you know... I'm always amazed at the uh, the folks who do, um, who are the character uh, body performers for uh, the parks, especially because that's that's a lot of work. Uh, how many shows would you do in a day? That's a lot. That is a lot of work. Um, I can't imagine it, and I definitely would not have been able to do that because you know I've never been in that kind of physical condition. I'm glad that I got the non-sweaty job doing the voiceover and uh and that was you know it was i think the way it worked out because i was too tall for the suit that they were already building that story i think it worked out really well um because everybody got to uh everybody got to do their thing concentrate on their thing the bodies and the voices and uh uh so much fun uh yes as a matter of fact leah leah was on that in that episode and she makes her final appearance and uh i do have some behind the scenes footage of her and i will play that uh sometime uh let's see brandon asks do you know if there are any scenes shot for the movie that didn't make the it in the final cut yes as happens with almost every movie that's ever made that you know there were scenes that were shot that did not make the final cut um there were what was the one thing? Um, Stephen White can correct me on this, but I believe there was. Oh, who who was the character Stephen with? Who had the the truck with the, all the 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 gear in the 
in the front and stuff. And I think that, didn't that get cut? A lot, a lot of that got cut. Um, and he was like making a sandwich or something on a grill that he had. And <laughs> I think that got cut. It was pretty, it was pretty awesome. A um, lot of things that Stephen wrote got cut, but, but uh, we won't dwell on that. <laughs> we will not dwell. Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. And I will see what... Um, Jen asks, could you describe the process of dubbing over other Barney voices? Uh, I've done similar work and getting it just right takes forever. Um, if you're talking about ADR, which is uh, automated dialogue replacement, um, it's uh, the only time I ever actually had to replace somebody's voice was when I was, well, two times. Uh, the first time was when I had laryngitis for three months during the first season of the show and somebody else read the lines live and then I came back later after I got my voice back and I dubbed all of that stuff, did ADR and replaced it all. Uh, ADR for Barney, of course, is fairly easy because, you know, there's like not the really fine mouth movements that you have with a human being. And so it didn't take, it wasn't all that hard to do. Uh, the other time that I did ADR for Barney was when I was doing... Uh, I was off in Montreal and I was shooting uh, Barney's Great Adventure and they would send us um, episodes because they were still shooting back in Dallas, Fort Worth and they would send us episodes and I would, and again, somebody read the lines uh, in real time when they were doing production and then they would send us the episodes and I would do ADR and replace that. And um, that's a process I've always enjoyed. I It's something that, something that I do uh, pretty well. I'm very proud of my ADR, uh, my dubbing skills. Um, and, uh, you know, they would, it's like the first time we did it, they, <laughs> they, I think they, they had booked the studio for an, like an hour and a half or something. And I think I finished dubbing one episode in 45 minutes. And, and uh, so they didn't know what else to do, <laughs> which is great. Save them some money. Studio time. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, there's, oh, uh, lots of, let's see, lots of questions here. Lots of questions. Lots of questions. Um, oh, here we go. How do they make the mouths move inside the suit as he speaks? Uh, that's an interesting question and it changed over time. Uh, at first we had a, a system where there was a, a rod that was attached to the, the jaw and the performer had one hand inside the suit holding the rod and would move the mouth with the rod, which meant that there was uh, a dummy hand on one side, uh, as is the case with Big Bird, because, you know, um, characters like Big Bird, it's like there's a hand in the mouth and then there's another hand, you know, gesturing, doing whatever. And, but there's another arm that the character has. So you have to have kind of a dummy arm that kind of hangs there. And with Big Bird, there was a string that was attached. And so it would, the other arm would move as the, the characters uh, or the, uh, the puppeteer's uh, uh, actual live arm moved. But with us, it was, uh, there was a dummy arm and there was the rod thing. And then uh, that changed over time. And at one point, uh, David Joyner came up with this idea because there's a kind of an armature inside the jaw. There was a metal band that made up the frame of the jaw. And so he got this idea to take a car wash sponge and wrap it around that and then gaff tape that and then bite the bar and move his head up and down. And that actually turned out to be the way that Barney's mouth moved after that, you know, for pretty much forever. Except, you know, the other characters were different, though. Uh, it's like um, with Baby Bop and with both Baby Bop and BJ, uh, the performers just bounce their heads and the, the jaws are 
are mounted with kind of a springy action on them, and so the mouths would just move whenever they would talk. It was just like this. So uh, not super, super articulate, as they say, but, uh, but yeah, it is a lot of work. Lots of work. Um, who else? What else? What else are we talking about here? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I realized that Barney f spoke French in the movie Barney's Great Adventure, uh, where they were at the fancy restaurant in town. That's Shea Snob in the scene after Barney sang. Remember that? I do. You know, I actually played, I think uh, I played the video, the behind the scenes video from that. Uh, you may have missed it. Ch uh, check it out. It's on, I'm sure it's on my Facebook page and on YouTube. But that video uh, has all the behind the scenes stuff where, you know, I, it's the story of how I <laughs> made, made up this arrangement, jazz arrangement of the song kind of at the last second, went into a studio and recorded it and brought it back. And, and, uh, it was, it was wild the way we did it. But, um, but yeah, Barney spoke French, uh, uh trop aimable, monsieur, et cetera. <laughs> I don't recall all of it, but it's, it's funny because it's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, Santa Claus, Santa Claus speaks all languages and Barney speaks all languages because uh, Barney will speak the language of whoever is imagining him. And I guess everybody imagined him, but it's, that's an interesting thing. It's, it's, uh, over time, Barney, uh, at first Barney was, you know, not seen by people who didn't imagine him. And then he was seen. And then from, you know, they kind of got over that and because they realized that it was, it made for a really difficult time, uh, if people couldn't see him, you know? So in Barney's great adventure, of course, people just see him <laughs> as he's there in the restaurant and they just make nothing of this this magenta dinosaur hanging out you know singing jazz <laughs> which is awesome <laughs> uh, what else mm -hmm. oh <laughs> what do we got here what? I wish I did Mark I wish I had a photo with the elephant from Barney Live in New York um uh, but he was too smelly to get near. He was just eye-wateringly smelly, <laughs> that dinosaur. Sweet little guy. He got loose at one point, and he was wandering around the stage. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh. So, let's see. What have we got? Um. Oh. Yes, we were talking about uh, Penny Wilson. Uh, and I have lots of memories of Miss Penny. She, she was so, so amazing. She did, she worked so hard and was so talented and did amazing, just amazing work, uh, with the kids. She was our performance director. Um, Penny was a, uh, had been a, a dancer, professional dancer. She was on Broadway. She was in Peter Pan. Um, she, uh, really brought a lot to the show. And yes, we all miss her badly. She passed away, um, which was very sad and it was a great loss, but, uh, but we remember her, we have her on behind the scenes video and we definitely have her in our, in our memories and in our hearts. And, uh, she has left a, a great legacy of, uh, so many, you know, so many great kid performances that she directed. Um, let's see what else we have. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I met Carol Spinney back when, um, uh, we did the, we worked together on the, uh, the PBS kid, the PBS kids sprout launch of Barney and friends. And it was just that one day that we worked together. It was a, it was a thing where, um, I'm not sure if it was, it was Dean. I can't remember who was doing the voice at the time, but uh, Dean wasn't available. This is after I had left the show and they needed somebody to do this launch event and the, uh, the regular voice was not available. So they got, they brought me back in just for this one day and it was great. He was, he was an amazing person. 
uh, just this incredibly kind, wonderful soul and funny and, uh, and gracious and warm and very cool. Uh, got to uh, hang with him uh, just a bit at a couple of uh, pop culture conventions uh, in recent years before he passed away. And, uh, and you know, just just one of those people you, you love, you know. There's, there's, it's like, wh- what's not to love, folks? What's not to love? He was just so great. And uh, talk about amazing legacies. He really left one. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, this was, I think this was the, in the 2019 show was, the Tampa show was uh, the first one that I did with him. And then there was another show after that. Um, and uh, it was just, you know, it was great to, to be with him and his wife, Deb. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Joseph says, February 22, I met Steve Whitmire at Pensacon and demonstrated my Kermit voice for him. Excellent. Yeah. Um, got to hang with uh, Steve at a couple of shows as well, a couple of, uh, of uh, conventions. And, uh, and you know, Steve's, Steve's also excellent. What, you know, tremendous creative talent and uh, uh, amazing Kermit, et cetera. Um, just, you know, all the puppeteers who, who do the Muppets are really tremendous uh talents and you know don't don't get too you know don't get don't get a swollen head guys if you're here right now but but really i i have such appreciation for them because that's a lot of work it's hard work you know not only does it take skill it takes a lot of physical effort to do um to do puppetry all day i mean i did a little bit of puppetry when i was younger in my like in my 20s and at, you know, <laughs> probably about three quarters of the way through a, a long shooting day, my, my entire forearm just froze up solid in a cramp. The entire thing was just like a rock. <laughs> it was, uh, it was tough. It's, uh, you know, and they're always under, underneath the set, they're scooting around on their dollies and it's amazing. They, they do all these physical things and it's really difficult, but at the same time, they bring out all these really subtle qualities in the characters that they have vocally and physically, you know, and that's the reason why when people are guests like on the Muppets, they look at the puppet instead of looking at the puppeteer while they're interacting. It, it's just the natural thing to do because the puppet is like alive. It's everybody says the same thing. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, for, for, uh, for good reason, because, uh, you know, I've never done, I've never done any puppetry that's even approaches the same universe as the folks who do the Muppets. So I have a great appreciation for them. Um, <laughs> as Brandon says, Brand, puppeteer Brandon says, not the most luxurious job, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I really could have spent uh, time on the set uh, with uh, Bradley and and everybody else um, who was on uh, Muppets Mayhem, um, because you know it was it was unfortunate that the the you know the COVID zone thing was in place, so didn't really get much time to uh, spend on the set at all. But uh, always great to watch that. One of my favorite things of all time that I have seen was. Uh, the time that, um, um, that, um, 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 animal had the, the, uh, the drum off with Dave, um, oh man, his, 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 uh, his, his name is, uh, Foo Fighters, you know, Dave, uh, animal and Dave had the drum off and I actually got to watch that in person and it was like. Uh, wow, it was just so great. Dave Grohl, yes, thank you, Joseph. Um, uh, obviously, I need to I need to eat something again. <laughs> I hate a little something earlier on, but I'm losing it now. So you can tell my blood sugar is starting to drop a little bit. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it was amazing. Uh, you know, just just to watch the, these two incredible talents doing their thing uh, was it was just so cool. Plus, it was hilarious. You know, and they're throwing the kicking down the drum kits and stuff. It was so awesome. So awesome. Well, listen, uh, it, speaking, speaking of needing to go eat, I should probably go do that now because I've been running here for over an hour. <laughs> so I need to go. <laughs> I need to go. Yes, as a matter of fact. Animal! Animal! Yes. My, one of my favorite Muppets, too. I think he's one of everybody's favorites. And if you haven't seen it yet, go see, go stream, if you can, uh, on Disney Plus, go stream The Muppets Mayhem because it is awesome. It really is awesome. And I'm very proud that I got to work on that show. So thanks to everybody for coming. I really appreciate you. And, uh, and I just want to say, and remember, I love you. <laughs> so long, everybody. Oh, can I get a group hug? Yes? Okay, here we go. Oh, thank you so much. So long, everybody. Have a great time. Take care. Everybody have a great weekend. All right? Bye. <laughs>